Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to show you how to create this very iconic movie poster in my opinion and this is for the movie Moonlight. When it comes to movie posters, I don't actually remember a lot of them besides maybe the Star Wars ones but the Moonlight poster is just very distinct in my memory for some reason. I think it's because it's super unique and it just stands out and so I decided to make a video on it. It's actually super simple and we're going to get right into it but before we do, if you guys could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'm also going to leave a link to Photoshop, the entire Adobe suite, all the applications are currently 60% off for students and teachers, so make sure to check out that promo. I'm also going to leave a link to a Photoshop playlist with other tutorials as well as my Discord channel so that you guys can connect with over 500 different creators. And yeah, that's about it. With that being said, let's get straight into it. So right here, you can see the movie poster. It's really, really nice. And you can see right off the bat, it's split into three different photos. And the three photos are actually different. Like it's when he was younger, when he was a teen, and when he's an adult. And if I hide on the layer, you can see this is the three photos I was talking about. And basically it looks pretty simple, which it is. Uh, these photos are basically like sort of colorized. One's aqua, one's like pink, one's blue. So that's what we're gonna attempt to do. So right here, I have a photo of Frank Ocean. I thought this was just a very iconic self-portrait, so I thought I'd use it. And basically, we're gonna make three different copies of this photo, and we're gonna colorize those three different photos, and I'm gonna show you how you can split the colors. I was trying to find three different photos that sort of lined up perfectly, but I couldn't find them. Chances are these three photos were taken in the same spot, same area, that's why it looks so unified and they definitely put a lot more thought in than what I'm doing right now. So to accomplish this color effect, I was looking through different ways you could do it. Typically, I would just go to hue and saturation and colorize it. But what this does is it makes all the colors the same color, which I didn't really like. Because if you look at the original images, the original images have a clear contrast between the given color like aqua and the darker colors like black. Right here, it just looks like it's purple, which I don't really like. I also tried to use a photo filter, but photo filters aren't that strong. You can see it still looks um, a little bit like the original image. So the best way I found was to use gradient maps. And the reason why gradient maps work is because you can apply as many different colors as you want, meaning I can add the darker blacks as well as the brighter colors. So let's just say we're doing aqua and I'm just going to show this as a reference. I'm also just going to move this up so you guys can see. So if we go here, the only issue is it's not bright enough right now. You can see this color right here is super bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the curves to make it brighter. You can also use brightness and contrast, but I'm just going to make it brighter. So this is the closest I can probably get to matching um, this color right here. So once I'm done with one color, I'm going to basically group it and I'm going to duplicate it and basically change it for the next color. So I'm going to highlight all these, press Control G to group, and I'm just going to call this one Aqua. And now I can duplicate this, so you can press Control J, or you can hold Alt and drag. So I'm going to call this one Purple. So basically for this one, you just want to go back on Gradient Map and just change the color. You can also just use the Color Picker tool as well so this one's a little bit less vibrant this was the original color a little bit more of a faded color and i'm going to duplicate it one more time press ctrl j and call this one blue and this one's even duller it looks like it gets duller uh, which is something i didn't actually realize until i saw this so now we're going to go back on gradient map So something like this. So now we're done. I'm going to hide this layer right here. We don't need this. And basically you can see the three different colors, right? And I'm going to just move all of them down because I did um, readjust it so that I can see the other image. So right here we have Frank Ocean. And so basically now what we're going to do is we want to make each of these individual photos or individual layers. So if I wanted to like edit one of these, I couldn't just because these are multiple layers right now. So what I could do is I can merge the group so that all the contents of the group are in one layer. So all you wanna do is press Control E for each of them. 
So now they're just a single layer. Now I'm gonna bring in this photo so I can use it as reference. So the first thing we notice is that this side of the image basically just slices through half of the poster um, on a slant so we can easily do that. So that color is blue, which is great. It's already on top. So I'm just going to take the pen tool and I'm just going to create a slanted cut right here. And I'm just going to delete the left portion of this photo. And I'm going to right click, press make selection, uh, make the feather radius zero. And then there. And also you have to take in mind that we're splitting the face into three, not the body or anything like that. So right here you can see this doesn't really take up a third of the face, but because of this photo and how most of it is his body. But if you're doing a self portrait with a focus on a face, you want to make sure that the face is split into three right here. Uh, we're not really doing that. Next, you can see there's a line that forms from that point, from that slanted point going up um, for purple. So we're going to do that. I just want to make sure that it's evenly distributed. So right here, I don't think that it is. So I'm going to hold control. I'm going to just move this point slightly left so that it's uh, distributed a little bit more evenly. Right click, make selection, delete. And that's about it. What I'm going to do, um, just so that the aqua is a little bit more distinct from this blue, because they sort of kind of mix together. I'm just going to add some vibrance to it. And I'm going to make it a little bit brighter. So there you go. That's about it for this tutorial. I'm just going to point out a couple of other things. When you're taking this photo, if you do take it, you can see there's a focus on his eyes. So make sure if you are taking this photo yourself that there's a focus on the eyes and there's a low aperture. You can see that the bottom portion of this photo is sort of blurred out. That's because they're probably using a camera and a lens with like a 1.8 aperture or maybe even lower. You, you might also notice because there's three different photos, they don't align perfectly, which actually adds to the poster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly adjust the scale of each of these photos so they don't perfectly align just to add that effect. So I'm just going to click on this layer, press control T to transform. I'm just going to make it slightly bigger. So it's almost like a mosaic, like a broken piece of glass. So you want to shift the scale and the position a little bit. And that's about it. I'm going to just do some last adjustments with contrast and stuff like that. You also might want to sharpen the photo just because this one is so sharp. And you can see the shadows in the blacks in the photo are super dark. So that's why you want to increase contrast. You want to make sure that it's super, super punchy and contrasty. So yeah, that's about it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.